In this installment of JavaScript Questions, we want to talk about undefined and what is the best way to work with undefined. This grew out of our previous video on JavaScript Questions that had to do with coercion. And you'll see that tie in perhaps in a little bit. But first, I think it's important to talk about the difference between null and undefined as we begin this discussion on undefined. Now, both null and undefined are primitive types in JavaScript, and they both represent an absence of value, but they are different primitive types. For example, if I open up the console and I do type of undefined, it returns the string undefined. If I do type of null, it returns a string object. So obviously they are different primitive types. They are not the same, but they both represent or they both indicate an absence of value. So let's first look at when undefined becomes a part of your code. When undefined is registered to a variable or whatever else it may be registered to. So let me jump to Sublime and show you some examples which I've entered, which will show this. Now here are four situations where you will see undefined within your code. First off, if a variable is declared, but a value is not assigned to it yet. Second situation is if a property doesn't exist on an object. So here I've declared an object and then I'm logging to the console a property name, which has not been assigned to that object. Now you have to be aware of your prototype chain in this instance. If it exists somewhere on the prototype chain, then it's not going to be undefined. A third situation is when a function returns without a value. So here, define a function with a single return statement, and then we'll call that inside of a console.log statement to see what that returns. And then finally, function parameters that are not provided with an argument value. Those would be undefined as well. So if I jump back out to this page and I refresh it, we can see that undefined is printed for all four of those console.log statements. So those are situations where undefined is assigned by the system. And that's an important clarification between undefined and null. It is assigned by the system. Null is not assigned by the system. So when the system is trying to indicate an absence of value, it uses undefined. It does not use null. And I know when I was first starting with JavaScript, I would do my if statements and I would include both undefined and null because I didn't know which one I should be checking for. Well, the system is not going to assign null to anything. So now let's take a look at some basic rules which I try to follow with undefined and null. So first off, undefined. It represents an absence of value as we talked about. It is assigned by the system. So the basic rule is you should let undefined just happen. Meaning, if you need to indicate an absence of value, don't assign it undefined yourself. Assign the value null. Let the system assign undefined, and then you can differentiate between undefined and null. Because null represents an absence of value as well. But it is assigned by the program, not by the system. So it may be assigned because of some code you wrote, and that is where null gets assigned to something. So then the basic rule is, if you're assigning an absence of value, if you want to indicate an absence of value, use null. Don't use undefined. I use those two basic rules because it helps me in the code I'm writing to differentiate between the two. And I've seen other programmers that use the same type of rule. 
All right, so now if in your code you need to test for undefined, what is the best way to go about that? Now, as was mentioned in our last video on coercion, a common method of doing that is this method. Let me go ahead and remove this code and I'm going to declare a variable. And because I'm not assigning a value to it, it's going to be undefined. And then a common way to test whether it's undefined is using the truthy or falsy value of undefined or null for that matter. Because they both evaluate to false. So this method that I'm showing here is a very common way where you just check to see if that exists then you do something with it. If it doesn't exist, then you do something with it. So that's pretty common. And this little bit of code we wrote will work. For example, if I jump out, refresh, we can see that it's 100. So it did assign it to 100 because it is currently undefined. Now, as, as mentioned in the previous video, where you run into trouble with this is if A could be an empty string or it could be a zero, because both of those would evaluate to false as well. And then your code would be acting as if it were undefined when actually it is not undefined. So another way to do this, another way to test for undefined is simply check to see if A is equal using triple equals undefined. Now the reason we use triple equals I'll show you in just a minute, but let me save that, refresh, and as you can see, we still have the 100. So it was equal to undefined, it then assigned it a value of 100. The reason we use triple equals is because if we do null equal to undefined, that is equal to true, where null triple equal undefined is equal to false. Because double equal uses coercion, and so they both can be coerced to the same Boolean. Triple equal does not allow that. So that's why we use triple equal in checking with that. Now some, I'm gonna leave this one here and copy and paste it down here. Some people will do this to check for undefined. I wanna discuss what is the difference. So they will check the type of the variable to see if it's equal to undefined. Now what's the difference between this and this? Why use type of over just using this? Well, let me comment this out for a second and I will show you one of the reasons. And then we'll explain another. Let's say the variable hasn't even been declared yet. If I save that, refresh, we get a reference error. So with this statement, we get a reference error if the variable has not been declared. That could be an issue in some of the code we're doing. Now how about this method down here? Let me go ahead and uncomment that, save it. refresh, we do not get a reference there. And so it can depend on what you're trying to accomplish, which one of these methods you use. Now, uh, another reason that this method for checking undefined became more common is because it, in earlier versions of JavaScript, you could redefine undefined to something else. And so to prevent that possible occurrence, programmers began to check the type of. That has since been corrected in JavaScript as of ES5. So whether you use the triple equals undefined or the type of to check to see whether something is undefined, it's up to you. It can be a preference. It can be It can depend on what you're trying to accomplish. 
Now, if you did need to check to see if a variable has already been declared or not, before you use this method, you could do that with the in keyword. For example, I could write this and then put the global object. Now, let's go ahead and save that. Refresh. I don't get the error with the keyword in. Now, if I uncomment that line where it is declared and refresh, we do get the results of that if statement where we check to see if the variable is part of the global object. So that's a discussion of some of the best ways to work with Undefine within your JavaScript code. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, like the video. To subscribe to our channel, you can click the link on the left. We add new videos each week. If you'd like to view another one of the videos related to JavaScript questions, you can click the video link in the middle. And to visit our website, allthingsjavascript.com, where you can take courses on JavaScript and access other resources, you can click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.